Hello students, welcome back. In the previous video, we saw how to create hash values and how to make use of those hash values to audit whether our evidence has been tampered or not. In this video, we are going to analyze the live evidences which we had captured during our data acquisition phase. If you remember, we had used FTK Imager and we had actually captured all the live evidences using a RAM dump. Fine. So let me show you that particular file which is still present in this particular folder. This is that file memdump.mem mem dump and this is the hash of that particular file. So now what we need to do is to analyze those uh, evidences captured during the live RAM dump acquisition phase what we need to do is we need to install an application called as volatility. Now volatility is basically a framework which was designed by volatility foundation. As you can see over here, it is a non profit organization uh, that maintains and promotes open source memory forensics with their volatility framework. So we are going to make use of this open source technology called volatility framework. So let's use this tool. So for downloading it, you need to visit this website volatilityfoundation.org and go to this download section. Once you go over here, you will be presented with this page, simple looking page and depending upon your uh, operating system, you need to download the executable. The first is download volatility 2.6, which is available for Windows standalone 64 bit, then Mac OS, then Linux OS and then the source code. So I'm interested with this download the volatility 2.6 Windows standalone executable 64 bit version. So I will click on it. And this is getting downloaded a very small sized file 14 MB in size. Once it is downloaded, let's click on it, extract it. I will extract this in the same folder. Uh, this particular folder. So let me create a new folder for it. And select that folder. Extract it. Now what you can do is, this is the actual uh, application which you are interested in. Just uh, remove the additional letters at the end because we are going to use command prompt and it would be really easy to work with a smaller name. Fine. So now what we need to do is we need to open CMD command prompt inside this directory. It will look something like this. As this application is built on Python, what we need to do is we simply need to enter the name of that particular file volatility. Uh, space minus h if i'm not wrong let's see yes uh, it is the volatility framework along with the available plugins as you can see on your screen so these are the various plugins supported uh, plugin commands by volatility you can see these are the various options print so and so information detect so and so information so now it ultimately depends on what exactly you want to display on the screen and based on that your output will be shown to you so now what you need to do is you need to copy your memory dump file into this folder just to avoid adding those extra path uh, again and again. But there is only one concern. My evidence drive is huge. It is approximately 17 to 18 GB in size and it will take uh, nearly two to three hours just to go through this scan process. So it is a very lengthy process. So I have an alternative using which I will show you the exact process. Uh, but with a smaller size RAM dump. So what you can do is on the internet, there are multiple uh, sites where sample memory RAM dumps are available. So what you can do is you can simply go to uh, Google and search GitHub Volatility Foundation Memory Samples. And the very first link over here will redirect you to this particular GitHub repository. Here you will see all these images. These are all safe memory dumps. You can download any of these memory dumps. These are basically used for various uh, challenges, online challenges, forensic challenges. So you can select any one of the RAM dump, uh, which are basically smaller in size. So I have selected this third one. 
this forensic challenge after unzipping that extracting all the contents uh, this is what I got memdum.bin binary file it is 500 MB in size so it will uh, solve my purpose I will be able to show the entire process using this memory dump so copy this and paste it here in your volatility folder so once it is pasted over here now let's go back to our console our command prompt so what we need to do simply type volatility space minus h this will again open up the various uh, options for you now what we need to do is our very first task is we need to find out the info associated with this memory dump so what you need to do is you need to type volatility space minus f this time f stands for the file name then assign the name of that memory dump file that is memdump.bin and then image info fine so once this is done press enter now this will take some uh, 10 to 15 seconds as the size of that memory dump has reduced significantly it, it won't take much of your time and you will get the results immediately so as you can see so this is nothing but the info associated with this particular mem dump file you can go through it the profiles associated with this is windows xp so basically this is a memory dump obtained from a windows xp machine and it is running service pack 3 so these are all the information associated with this this is uh, when the image was captured 2012 way back in 2012 and this is nothing but the local time now what you can do is you can again go back to these options now it's entirely up to the forensic investigator or that forensic analyst how he or she wants to access the data how much data he or she wants to capture from that memory dump so i will show you just two or three options and rest i will leave it up to you because these are so many because there are so many commands you can play around with so what i will do is i will first of all uh, use this particular command that is extract command history by scanning for command history cmd scan so using this will ultimately tell you what were the various options what were the various commands run on the command prompt when this particular ram dump was captured right so for that again the command is like this volatility minus f mem dump instead of image info now you need to type profile because we are now concerned with this particular profile only uh, we are going to fire all our analysis processes towards this particular profile only so copy this profile over here paste it over here space cmd scan and press enter doing this will basically show you all the commands latest commands which were run on the command prompt of that suspects computer so doing this will basically tell you what were the various commands or the latest commands that were run on that suspects computer as you can see the suspect had actually used a command net use this ip address and this particular location so basically this command was used to access this particular location using this ip address then change directory then copy something from this particular location then again directory and again a particular file mdd.exe so it might be malicious or it might be something non-malicious that depends upon the uh, nature of that file but ultimately you will come to know what were the latest commands that were fired on that particular command prompt so this comes really handy in finding out what were the actual uh, activities being performed over there the next very important uh, option or very important plugin that i would like to show you is called as hash dump so just change the name of that uh, plugin and everything else remain same hash dump plugin is basically used to display all those users of that computer system along with their hashed passwords how let's see so as you can see these are the users of that computer system and these are their hash values obviously these are not present in uh, plain text but these are present in lm and ntlm hash values fine so the next thing that we are going to look for is what we call as connections connection is very important and crucial because it will tell you what was the actual uh, network connection made from that computer system to someone else let's see 
Well, as you can see, the local IP address of that computer was this, and this was the remote address. So this particular computer system was trying to access this particular network using this IP address. This comes really very handy uh, during some network forensic analysis because we would like to uh, get the remote address, the remote IP address uh, from where the attack might have been launched on your local address. So it comes really handy to find out the remote address of that uh, attacker or it could be from of a victim also because the that particular computer system can be used to launch an attack on a remote victim also so both the ways it is uh, possible to find out information that is about the local address as well as about the remote address also so these are the three options that i have shown you first of all let me show you uh, the various options available and then i will show you one more command as you can see these are the various options now one of the most important aspect of forensics is to find out the number of processes open at that particular uh, suspect's computer. So you can simply use this command ps3 to find out all the processes which were running at that point of time while the RAM dump was being captured. So you can simply use this uh, command ps3 and it will display all the processes in a tree format. Isn't it cool? So as you can see, these were the processes which were running at that point of time and this will give you a lot of information about the nature of the attack which was being performed over there and you will get a lot of information from this simple looking tree structure over here svc host csrss.exe explorer.exe uh, mdd.exe these were the various uh, processes which were open at that point of time so that's it in this particular video in this video we have learned how to make use of a ram dump which was actually being captured from a live system and analyze it with the help of this tool which is what we call as the volatility framework so i hope you like the content of this video in the next section we are going to learn more about wireless forensics so stay tuned for that next section